Welcome back to the Blizzard Arena for Saturday night. Stoush between the LA Gladiators and the San Francisco Shock. You know, the Gladiators are mad, bro. Like, why'd you leave us out in the California Cup? We're from California too. Yeah, that's and we're gonna true. make you pay for it. I never really thought about that. Yeah. But uh, you ever now think they, there's not three teams, just there, two? There are three teams uh, located in California. Underhanded in the dealings. It's, uh, it'll be Gladiators versus the Shock here tonight. I think this is gonna be a very good game. I think we get to see exactly where the Shock are at in terms of this meta. If they win this, they do clinch a top six spot. So that would be uh, great for them as the season moves on. Uh, they have that breathing room that they uh, definitely would want to try some things out towards the later half of the season. Also give their fans some breathing that, room. That's just still important for the Gladiators. This is also in a oddly enough way uh, with London's loss, a pretty important match for the Hangzhou Spark to be watching. It and throws that fourth yeah. six kind of into turmoil. And the Gladiators, Matt, let's keep talking about them because they've been an up and down team already, right? Oh, yeah. They start off this stage by beating the NYXL, but then their most recent match was up against the Chengdu Hunters. This one went all the way, all the way they were forced to go. Yeah, and it, it's a very close match, which going into it, you probably do not expect to be very close, but uh, the Hunters came in, put a very good effort forward, but it's just weird with the Gladiators. Like, sometimes they, like, they have these matches, and you're like, okay, they should be able to roll Chengdu. They had just you know, played a great against New York, and then this game is close. They, they just have like really inconsistent uh, plays sometimes. And this is something that I was interested in. So wow. I've always talked about how you know, they don't really kind of play to the top competition against the top teams. And you see versus the other teams in the top eight, only 17 and 24. Against the bottom 12 teams, they have a 70% win percentage. I mean, that is huge. So they're beating all the teams they should beat, which is great. great. But if you're going to be a contender at the end of the year in the playoffs, it's got to be better than 17 24. So your Gladiators are definitely sitting middle of the pack. You know, they're taking down the teams that they're expected to, but we're not seeing them maybe go above and beyond yeah. against some of these top teams. Right? And, and those are map records as well. That is not a uh, match okay. records, obviously. So, uh, you know, 17 24 maps, uh, 17 wins on the map, 24 losses against the top seven other teams you know, in their pool. It's, uh, it's not great for the LA Gladiators. It's maybe not uh, the hallmarks of a, of a season champion, which is what their fans, of course, yes. are hoping for. Let's look at the San Francisco Shock on the other side of the table, though. Here's a roster with a bit more depth, right? We're seeing uh, oh, yes. you know, them do a bit of a Soul Dynasty impression here. Poor Nevix there with the dash by his <laughs> name. But the Shock are, uh, in general, showing a lot of individuals it, this stage. It, it speaks how good the overall roster is, is that when Nevix doesn't get any, any love. I mean, Nevix is a tremendous player in his own right. But you see how the roster is kind of being built right now. They're playing Moth, Violet, and Shayobin all the time. So you have both supports staying in all of the games. Uh, they're kind of forced to do that when they make uh, they send Sleepy over to the Justice, right? They lose that extra flex support. And Choyobin, he stays in in the off tank role. Uh, that, that would be where Nevix would have gotten his play. I think the uh, biggest things you see is the two players up for like your team mobile MVP down there, Sinatra and Super. They've gotten the lowest play time so far yeah. this stage. It's almost as if they're not as desirable to the team in a meta that, you know, we're going to see more Orisa play and more of that double sniper play, which is where we're yeah. seeing people like Striker and such get a look in. But let's welcome their opponents first to the stage, the home team left out of the California Cup, but they're here to play. It is the LA Gladiators. Gladiator. Gladiator. Nobody puts the Gladiators in a corner. Jaw 4 leading the charge. Of course, Decay right behind him. The recognizable DPS duo for the Gladiators, who, you know, maybe have almost flown under the radar more than the Valley, despite having a much better record. It's just they kind of get the business done well, quietly. It's, a, it's exactly what we showed with that map record, is that I love when you see the Gladiators play against, you know, some of these bottom teams. They look phenomenal. They look unstoppable. It's just when you see them go up against the top teams in the league, that's where they falter. And then I think that's kind of sticks with you when you watch them play. You're like, all right, they're good enough to get there. Are they good enough to win it all? You're not exactly too convinced. Yeah, it's a great point. I think maybe a lot of their fans are remembering more those losses to top teams uh, when they fail to be contenders other than them, than them just winning the games that they should. Let's welcome to the stage your opponents, the San Francisco Shock. Well, how about that vibe for you? Led by Moth, the big wrinkle brain of the outfit, San Francisco Shock. A little bit disappointed by, of course, the stage three results at the end, but once more, it's eye on the prize at the end of the season. Yeah, and they got Architect and Rascal starting in terms of the damage dealers today, <laughs> so Smurf isn't playing a ton in the main tank role. You expected that, uh, obviously, as we mentioned in the pregame. The supports, you expect to say the same. It's really the damage dealers that you expect to change constantly with this team. Uh, right now, they're now playing Strike at the beginning, so 
know, Widowmaker duties providing Rascal to place Widowmaker as well. Uh, you can see it either on Rascal or Architect. I think the advantage you get with having these two players in, in terms of damage dealers, is there's not really a predictable outcome of what they're going to play. Sure. Rascal and Architect are both two players who can play really almost every damage dealer hero across both of the yeah. player. I mean, opens up the option for you know, the Doomfist, the Hanzo Widowmaker. Let's go across the lane, though, and discuss the home team a little more, Matt, because really, there shouldn't be many matches the Gladiators go into to be considered an underdog. It just shouldn't be happening. Uh, this man on your screen, Decay, huge boost in the damage oh, yeah. dealer role this season. He and Shawford, do you think they have... Uh, the requisite coverage, though, in terms of hero pool to contend in this meta? I, I think they do. I think Decay is really, you know, coming into the league, he was hyped up like crazy. And you don't know how players kind of live up to that hype. Uh, he has definitely proven to be that good. I think it's just interesting for the Gladiators to work in a damage dealer that's this good and work around them. You remember last year, you know, this team is built around Fissure in that main tank role, right? Fissure, and then you had Surefour, who was great on the Widowmaker. I think <laughs> Winner of the 1v1 at All-Stars yeah, that I, year. I think this year it's a little bit of a different vibe where you're really building around Decay and trying to make his game work and let that damage dealer take you to the next level. It's a different vibe from the Gladiators. But as skilled as Surefour is on the Widowmaker, he's often said that he has a preference for playing that sort of flanker, that self-sufficient hero, just getting the, the more supportive DPS work done. Here's your map set presented by Toyota. It all begins today on the map of Ilios. Sunny Shores for us inside and outside, it appears. You got Ilios, Hanamura, King's Row, and Havana. So. I think on this first map, maybe you see, well, depends what uh, stage comes out here on Ilios, right? You can see Widowmaker play on Ruins. I think like maybe we get to see some Fara play as our Rascal and Architect can both play the Far. So, at least for the Shock right now, that looks like what they're going to attempt to do in terms of damage dealers. You think Smurf just makes a change over to Arisa, and that's what we see from them. And the Gladiators, they could uh, decide to run this. You know, Orisa Diva here, you know, with the May in place. Wow. Interesting there. So why the Diva here over the Roadhog map? Uh, for the Gladiators, you probably want that Diva in play to eat some of those halts. If you think they're going to run the far as well and you don't want to run any hit scan, you kind of need the Defense Matrix as well. Hey, they picked it pretty well. Four different DPS in the server currently. Rascal going to go over the left-hand side to try and start us off. Chuik over to put to sleep early. But look how low short for is. It's like he didn't know Rascal was behind him, despite the fact he'd already announced his presence with a hail of rockets. Still able to find that easy kill. Now he's uncontested. He's not giving Shaz the sight lines to put pressure on him. And the Gladiators are trying to turtle inside that side room. Twerking, though. We have two kills here. Go in favor of the Gladiators. Just all this poke damage that's coming down from Rascal. But you don't have any tanks here to hold serve on the point. So you have to give the point up. That'll be sure for who makes a change. He comes back off the spawn playing the Widowmaker. We have no tanks, so you give all the space up, which means that Shawfor now has tons of sightlines to choose from. It makes Rascal's life a lot harder. Oh dear, that is a huge sleep dart! Are you kidding me, Shaz? And it doesn't pick up the Still get the kill. I know Shawfor kind of messed it up. I still give credit to Shaz, but that's fine. Rascal goes down. Shawfor does find that headshot. The shock had moved up here with that Orisa composition. No one with Raw out of the picture. Talk about holding serve on the point with tanks, Matt. Now the Gladiators have a heck of a lot to, to play around. That's another sleep dart, by the way. And that's, that's a just big kill. I mean, you get Joyovan down. That's the only player on the team for the shot that you're worried about for the Gladiators, because Void can't contest the point alone against that Roadhog. The Roadhog hook will go right through. Void gets moved back. He flies on through as the Gladiators still hold the point. The supports for the Gladiators are looking unbelievable right now. Ridiculous. Shaz has the final blow off the back of that biotic grenade. And the shock, this is, this is a bit funky. The way that they're trying to approach this. I guess a lot depends on Rascal pressuring and getting connection. Uh, he, he is pressuring. I mean, he's got 44%, 45% of the team's damage right now. Architect's very quiet, though. Just they're not able to pick up anything else. And I think what you see with this change over to D.Va is they're just trying to create some type of offense outside of Rascal. Blizzard sound barrier committed here by the Gladiators, and Shawfall gets to sit back and do as he pleases. Just love to be here, don't you? It's, it's almost effortless. The rest of the shock are held in place by uh, Blizzard and then forced to find a sound barrier tank line of the Gladiators. No, thank you. 86% and counting, though, the shock. Pretty slow start here to the round. Violet's forced to use a defensive hydro grenade just to make sure he can get to the point. Even that's not guaranteed, though. The Doomfist switch for Architect. 
But Void already chases Rascal down and gets him off, and that should be enough. You've gutted the shock at this point. They'll be coming in in disparate pieces, Matt, but they're not cohesive right now. I, I mean, this has been a dominant performance from the Gladiators here in our first point. It'll be a Nano Boost that goes on Architect on the Doofus. He's just trying to make a play for the point, but you see none of these kills going in favor of the shock. is. They're not able to take advantage of all of that damage that Rascal was putting down on the far earlier in the point. Uh, Void set up very well. Great late round for him. Five final blows for the Diva, topping his team. But Big Goose and Shaz come out with two final blows each a pair. The San Francisco Shock get two kills. Just yeah. two. Ruined. It was uh, pretty ugly if you're a Shock fan. There is what a slow on the start. K on the main is not die during that. The only two deaths you have is Sherfor and Roars. Uh, Sherfor was taken out playing the Hanzo early on, then switched over the Widowmaker. He's good after that. You'll see him bring out the Reaper here as they go Reaper main. So we go on the Lighthouse and then Architect to pull out the Sombra. So uh, we've seen a lot of teams you know, opt not to have the Sombra in this comp. They've gone more for direct damage with the Reaper. Yeah, look. So I mean, okay, if you're EMP to Decay, well, fine. You don't have Ice Block, you don't have Wall. You still have your Endothermic Blaster. And you can use it in its entirety. The same for Shurfor. He but can you, still just rock the Hellfire Shock. If, if you EMP Shurfor, I mean, that is one of the benefits of Reaper, is that Reaper is not as affected by EMP as a lot of other heroes. It's, I mean, you have still, to commit, but that's fine. But he can, right, he can still put down a ton of damage. Architect actually sees the composition, translocates back to chain. Now we have a Reaper in play for the Shock. Shock will slowly approach the point. No real rush as Architect is still joining them. Nice wall there. Well placed by Rascal to keep the Reaper alive. Decay a little bit too far forward. Goes for the Ice Block here and might get caught by the grenade. Catching onto the main. Architect not committing to the point yet. He sees that Biotic Orb and realizes that his opponents are going to be getting healed up as he tries to bring them down. It's not worth putting himself in that position. Rascal is split for the rest of his team now and Void chases him down. Well spotted by the Gladiator. Void's had such a great game so far. And, and the advantage here for the Gladiators, having the Moira is you get this Coalescence earlier, as well as Moira can provide a ton of that AoE healing. Big Goose very close to a Sound Barrier as well. So the Lucio here for the Gladiators providing a ton of healing too. Violent playing the Ana. It's really the main difference in these two comps. He's going to have a Nano Boost, so... Who do you nano? Do you nano the Reaper? Do you nano May here in this scenario? Oh, holy old percent, Uncle Batman! Shawford sure sits in the corner. He does get slept here. Chance to wake up and finish Rascal off. The K is the one that got him. Shawford sure says, ah, miss me with this, because Architect comes in with three. Shawford sure just had a premonition. His spidey senses were tingling. He's like, nope, I don't want to be here anymore. He, he does pick up one on the point, so he's still holding on to it for a little bit longer. Gets to like two or three percent, but. That is a Blizzard plus a Death Blossom. We can check it out here. Oh, Giants here by Architect to get around. That's it. Yep, they just die, die, die. In the trailer park, boy, but he's gone around the outside anyway. We'd love to see it. Both with the sound barrier. Both the have the superchargers here, but it will be a struggle. Smurf gonna activate his straight away. Shawfall probably heads to the high ground. Maybe drops down the chimney like Dark Santa. He comes in with a Death Blossom. Finds Smurf, protected by the defense mages, and gets a big D suit there as well. The shock. Their reign on the point will be short lived. Uh, and losing Violet at the beginning, who's playing Ana. Don't really get a chance to use a biotic grenade or whatnot. He's gonna switch over to Moira. So. A little bit more is self-sustained as he actually gets pushed by Big Goose. Big Goose is the one who actually gets that final blow on the Violet. So Moira can uh, stay alive a little bit better on her own than Ana is. It looks like the shot gonna come here for the high ground. You do have this sound barrier. You would hate to use this to engage. You want to keep this sound barrier for this blizzard that's gonna come down. Yeah, you need to get to the point though without losing anyone. That's not easy against this May setup here. Decay. Doesn't go for the wall yet. Oh, sent it in, tries to block the self-destruct in uh, with Smurf, but it's actually fine that Void gets. Not good. Mock Sound Barrier comes out, but they didn't get to the point where the Blizzard is still effective. Big Goose now gonna charge down Rascal. Forces him out of position. Rascal can't take that fight at all. And Choi Hyoben has seen better days. Mech, look and average. Self-destruct on the point. Chas is just gonna fade away and avoid the damage from that one. And the Gladiators make their mark early. It's gonna be Rascal just falls over the finish line like you're at a 100 mile marathon and over the edge almost for Smurf. He's able to stay back on with the grappling hook. Moth 
can't really touch the point right now. Miniza Reaper, how are you going to stall out against this guy? Sure, four has the Death Blossom. And he'll make a point of using it against Moth, who's actually able to avoid it. Dexterous as he is. But that's how a home team takes a map one, and the shock. Best be respecting. That is not a close map one. Only eight eliminations, eight kills for the shock on both points to the 40 of the LA Gladiators. That is a big statement Atrocious. on win. You got to wonder, you know, what does the shock do for map number two? Do they run the same lineup? We'll find out right after this quick break. The Overwatch League is powered by Intel. Game, record, stream without compromise on Intel Core i7. And by Omen by HP, the official PC and display of the Overwatch League. They don't just play for a team. They play for every fan, every rival, every moment, every match. And when everyone watching expects the best, they perform with the best. What is it with favored teams coming in and just getting stomped in map one today, Matt? The Gladiators looked very good with a pretty straightforward approach to Ilios. Yes, uh, the Shock had no answer. It seems like the, you know, the damage dealer said that they had was not great. And I think that's one of the things you worry about the Shock as time goes on, you know, making some changes to their lineup. But I think Shurfor and Decay, I think you really settled on you know, these two as your damage dealers. We see Hydration, I know they've brought them in sometimes, you know, play, play Tank. Big, big Arisa first player. Point yeah. As uh, you know, Hydration's turned into an Arisa slash Wrecking Ball player. So Sinatra comes in here for map number two. He'll be subbing in for Architect. So you keep Rascal in, you bring Sinatra in. This is a different look than we've seen from them in the past. I'd be interested to see how I mean, Sinatra is much more used to playing with Super as a main tank. So being paired up here with uh, with Smurf, maybe that mixes things up a bit. Here's your head-to-head -head, though for your Widowmakers in uh, Map One or on Ilios. An Architect, completely non-existent. Look at him get yoinked yeah. off the roster quick as li <laughs> as you like after getting no kills. Yes, I mean you see the hero damage for sure. For just about a uh, you know, thousand over, no oh, yeah. final blows for Architect. I mean, when you're playing Widowmaker, if you're not really getting final blows, you're not getting the crit hits. Uh, you're not really contributing a ton, and I think our, our player's hiding behind the shield, maybe, but you have to create angles for yourself. I think that's what some of the best sort of makers in the league are doing right now. Bear in mind, uh, both players switched to Reaper, after which Architect yeah. definitely got more than zero kills uh, yeah, on yes. Lighthouse. So, I mean, you know, it's, it's not to say that he did nothing. No, I mean, Architect off. finished with seven limbs and three final blows, five deaths, uh, and he finished with the, the, the most percentage of damage contributed from his team. So. Although, uh, but I, I tell you what, though, the, the Reaper battle, it's, is the Reaper battle really that important when you lose a Widow battle like that on uh, one point? I mean, two minutes on one point losing that Widow battle, does that decide that point? Like, what's more impactful? I would say, uh, you know, the Widow v. Widow battle is probably the more impactful one. 
well. Second map in just a moment now. Shock boasting a little bit of a new look. Maybe that means what do we see? Do we see a Doomfist here and, on Hanamura? And the Shocker in, look, the Shocker in third place. They have time to mess around with this, make it work. I think you just worry towards well, the end. You mess around too much. They win here, they clinch top six, which means they don't have yeah. to participate in the play-ins to make playoffs. So well, you have room to work here. Maybe you need to use that time as effectively as possible. They're, they're still in a really good spot, even if they don't win here today to make it uh, you know, into the play-in. So we'll get to see the shock on defense here. Kick things off. So Rascal stays in. He will continue to play May. So Sinatra will bring out the Hanzo here to kick things off. As uh, you know, if you've been watching some of the Sinatra streams, he's been playing a lot of different heroes that we haven't seen him play in the past. A lot of uh, not Zaya. Yeah, I've seen him play, uh, you know, a ton of Widowmaker, Doomfist over the last few weeks. So it seems to be expanding his hero pool. And I think that's important for the Shock in general because you really relied on Sinatra and Super as like two team leaders, right? So they need to expand that hero pool, bring something in that works in this meta. The Hanzo battle, Mr. 150k versus Mr. 300k. <laughs> It's going to be the Gladiators on the attacking side. And Sombra looks like it will stay. So let's see how this plays out. It's a great map for a map. You get a lot of high ground to get safe hacks from. They, they decide to go dive. So they'll go Tracer with the Sombra here. Oh, and they're going to win Diva in play. And Shazzle into playing Moira. So you bring the Moira back again. you gotta, you got to fade aggressively sometimes. Not really. This is a play for the supports. You can't obviously dive the main. Roadhog Arisa combination. They're trying to get a pick onto one of the supports in the back. They get a hack on the Moth, and that's how they're going to try and kick things off. Trying to push forward on the Gladiator's shock. Trying to hold him in this choke as much as possible, Trick Omen. That's a defensive body grenade, so he's still going to be able to heal. In fact, it'll be boosted. Rascal hunting. So they do get the pick on to Sinatra, but you would have loved if you would have gotten as a Moth. They get the hack on the Moth to kick things off. And that like really kind of starts the dive that comes in from the Gladiators. Uh, the issue is, is they're not really able to take Moth out. They end up getting a pick on the Sinatra, I mean, but... I feel like your win condition in playing dive is definitely to take that immortality field out of the question, right? I mean, I, I think your your chances if you dive are to get a hack onto somebody who's like... Like I would have loved to see if you would have gotten a hack on to like Tryobin, burned him down. Violet, right? Rascal, obviously, you do. So you think that's the meta, it's, so. it's worth hacking someone else in the Batiste, even if you can turn off them yeah. the field? So they switch off of Dive now. Uh, so Sinatra comes back on Tracer. So we've seen him play a ton of Tracer over the years. This will be Coalescence from Shaz. It's, it's going to be the shock with the man advantage here. Sinatra inside Immortality Field currently. Hunting for sure for here. And again, he's happy to keep his distance. Let Choi Kyobin step in when the real work needs to be done. He's paving the way for the rest of his team. Big Goose won't be getting away. And Orwell Roy is slightly too portly to fit through the gap. Sets Kate just hits a headshot, just slightly firing through the door, but that'll be all right. Sinatra will come back pretty quick. You'll have all six ultimates available for the San Francisco Shock. And because of the changes that has gone on with the LA Gladiators, you just had that coalescence. I mean, Matt, you almost would prefer a, a May over a Widowmaker when you're trying to kill Tracer, because either one is a, is a headshot yeah. insta-kill. And the May Elf is a little bit more utility than Widow. Okay, Roar. Well, I tell him to get off his high horse, but he stepped down from the wall himself. They use the wall on the high ground to block Trayovin's view. Sinatra into the back line. Pulse bomb connection. It got decay though. Was stuck to shore for. Looks like he was a little bit too slow on the Wraith walk. Either way, getting the May out of the picture is big, and the Gladiators still want to commit though. This is quite interesting now. Straight into a whole hog trick. Hoping to hold the bomb. Ah, you're making me motion sick. Gets him though, and a sound barrier from Big Goose amounts to very little, and that is the end of Shaw for as we know him. So when Sinatra hits that pulse farm, I think he may have actually just dropped the, the shock spray there in the ground. Enough time, to, enough time to drop that one. Yo, how do you have enough time uh, to just drop your spray? Th <laughs> this is huge. I mean, depending on how the gladiators decide to use some of these ultimates, this could be their only really good chance at. He sprays like a chalk outline, you know? Uh, you know, you can't really come in and use Supercharger to choke here because they're just going to blizzard it. So you have to come up with a creative option. They can break line of sight, right? They can just get back to the point, the shock. And... Yeah, I mean, they could rush, right? Oh, okay. Nice wall, splits the players off. He is stuck. It's more nice block, too. I think he has to, right? He can't yeah. move in that position. He's actually stuck. Short foot out of Sinatra Pulse. Stick on Shaz! Can't get away from that one. No fade option. Sinatra chasing down Big Goose almost at the cost of his own life, but he thinks better of it. Reconsiders, recalls. That's a that's a blizzard. If I've ever seen one. Rascal goes for it, catches Big Goose there. Great angle. He gets rid of Raw. The tracer from Sinatra is really starting to hurt now in a shock. 
Very comfortable defense here. Point. He gets to the point. Put to sleep now as he touches it. The, the shock still need to respond to this. There is a Reaper set up on the point. Sure for it is close to a death loss, but without defense matrix, he won't be able to use it safely. And Smurf catches him. You saw how desperately Void was trying to keep him alive to get the death blossom. But it wasn't enough. He didn't get there. Sinatra. You notice he sprays the ground very frequently, but this time it's an oops. I did it again. The shock. Looking like they're gonna hold here. Raw. Now he's gonna get frozen solid. There's not really much else to be done. San Francisco, that's a bounce back. A very good defensive hold. The Gladiators have not won this map. And I think you see why. They're not able to make a good use of their ultimates towards the end there. They're not really able to settle on a composition, give themselves a good chance. As the Shock looks much better when you bring Sinatra back into the game. Absolutely, the Tracer towards the end of the round there. Six final blows for Sinatra. 21% of his team's overall damage done. Staying very, very slippery. Managed to get two big pulse bomb sticks. That's not easy to do. We'll be back in just a moment. The Gladiators will get to defend. Coca-Cola is the official refreshment of the Overwatch League. Well, Earth becomes Sky and the tables are turned just like that. San Francisco Shock uh, very, very, very pleased with their defensive hold here on Hanamura. Take a look at uh, Sinatra with the pulse farm. Oh, fade away. While he's gone. Oh, no, it just came off cooldown. It just came off cooldown. <laughs> That's pretty really awesome. Or perhaps because he was called Lessing. Yeah. He couldn't have done it. That's more correct, excuse me. Match of the week coming up tomorrow, though. Atlanta Rain versus the Houston Outlaws. Both teams Atlanta's on good. the up and up. Both teams trying to get into those play-ins for playoffs. Watch the Twitch, ESPN app, Disney XD. Myself and Mr. Morello will be on the call. Your boy Erster is out there dumping oh, yeah, on I've been, I've, been, I've been on the Erster Kool-Aid since day one. So the Sinatra Doomfist here. Doomfist Reaper. Uh, this is a very interesting type of dive here. Off the shock is they're gonna go try and access the high ground here. Oh, high ground access, Matt. Sinatra getting up there with consummate ease. Oh, now he's hacked, so this is a bit awkward for him standing where he is. Sure for just trying to shut down some of these mobile damage deals before the fight begins. Unfortunately, it's not enough. Rascal has gone down, so Sinatra has to carry the damage duties on his own, but he's being backed up by Chakovin on the high ground. Sinatra gets a moment to take a brief sidebar. He does see Decay whisk past him quickly, but he's more interested in the fast <laughs> You can't show this on TV! Look! Oh, that is good cool stuff. Not where you want to be, man. The point being taken here by Violet. It does not look like the Gladiator is going to have a great opportunity. Yikes, dude! Big yikes! Surefoot was there, but not able to make a play. As map one is all Gladiators. Map yeah. number two. The gladiators don't even show up, it's all shots. He finally in there as well with a more aggressive fade than an inner Sydney hipster chasing up the rest of the shock and they got into that room, it was over. We'll be back after half time.
The Overwatch League is powered by Intel. Game, record, stream without compromise on Intel Core i7. And by Omen by HP, the official PC and display of the Overwatch League. The battle between LA and the Bay seems to never disappoint, and this one is no exception. After the Gladiators took map one, it was the shot getting the full hold on Hanamura to even things up at one apiece at the half. What's up, y'all? Back with the crew. We're back here for halftime. Guys, I gotta say, y'all were talking about this match was gonna be a steamroll. No, I never said that. <laughs> I said that. said that. I said that. I, was I thought this, that was guy, this game was gonna be sick. Uh, okay, okay, Brand, you said it. Uh, but so far, it's been, it's been a good one. It's, it's been, been pretty good. It's close. kind of a steamroll. First map was kind of a steamroll on the one side of Gladiators. Second map, yeah. kind of a steamroll for the shot. But those are the best games because both teams are artists. feeling each other out. And then the halftime is gonna be unbelievable. They're gonna switch things around. And then we're gonna see the map five Ooh. that we absolutely deserve. What All right, well, this? taking a look at that first steamroll uh, on Elios, the the gladiators were popping off on this entire map. It was, it was, it was so good, but it was like, it, it wasn't sure for and Decay so much as all of the support cast around them. It was Big Goose, it was Shaz, and Void really shutting people down. And the San Francisco shot got rocked. Yeah, this was a phenomenal showing from the Gladiators. Uh, honestly, a welcome sight, given how they've been playing recently as well. You know, they haven't had the most clean games of all time. You know, ended up losing to the Outlaws earlier in Stage 4. Now, putting up very good results against one of the top teams in the league. But also, we really haven't seen a performances like that from a support line since we swapped Not to Rolllock, honestly. Yeah. And Shaz and Big Goose made their presence so felt. And also Void, we don't really talk about very much, but he was crucial in shutting down, particularly Rascal on the Farah. Right, it's almost like the uh, LA Gladiators woke up in that first map. You know, this is back to the, what yeah. we're used to seeing out of them. But then moving on to Hanamura, uh, it was a little bit of a steamroll on the side of the San Francisco Shock. They looked awesome in this oh, map. It was so good. Like, this was a phenomenal from Sinatra. What a ridiculous performance on Tracer. Like, this is the hero that he was well known Show us the for. pulse bomb. Uh, yeah, that's the only <laughs> clip I want to see, honestly. This, this guy was absolutely cracked out of his mind the entire match. Like, the, the, look at this performance. Look at these uh, multiple pulse bombs that he's hitting. It doesn't even matter. He stuck the Reaper there, still gets the kill on Decay. Is this the, the one I'm thinking of? No, it's not. It's just another clip of Sinatra just absolutely demolished. Oh, Here it comes, it. though. Wait for this. What is that? <laughs> Excuse me. Illegal maneuvers right now. Steph Curry with the shot. I it's love it. so good. And Sinatra just picks this because it's a pocket pick. Yeah. It's not really the Tracer should be able to do these things. But my god, when you're as good as Sinatra, you can make it happen. And it's yeah. been so long since we saw Sinatra, I've forgotten how good he was. We don't think of him the same he's way as like he's feeling it. Striker or say we all be he knew he popped off. Right. I mean you could see it in his face at the end of that round. He is absolutely on fire right now, just playing peak hot. 
Well, all season long we've been seeing him on the Zarya, but this is this is Marquis Sinatra right here. This is what we what we came oh, yeah. here to oh, see. Yeah. Uh, but guys, you know, last week we uh, we revealed the top five candidates for the Team Mobile MVP in the 2019 season. Sinatra, Janu, Super Twilight, and Gushue all made the cut. So today we've got a game to get to know our top five a little better. It's time to play two truths and a lie. So, Brent, Joss, I'm going to give you guys three statements about each of our T-Mobile MVP candidates, and uh, you can tell me if it is a truth or if it's a false. I don't know them very well. Uh, yeah, I mean, neither do I. So, <laughs> really? For it. Yeah. You don't all know right. them at all. You know Sinatra, though, dude. Well, so. you know. We're going to find out. All right, okay. so, uh, truth You are truth kidding lie. This here. is Sinatra. <laughs> so, there's two truths in here and yeah. a lie. So, is his favorite movie Mona? Uh, is Mona. <laughs> he, As was he a couple of dog groomer? Mona. 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 Get him off. Mona. Move Mona. away. Moana. 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 Fantastic, Moana. Fantastic, Fantastic Disney film. Great soundtrack. That should be a Dwayne The Rock Johnson's in it. One of my favorite Disney songs of all time. Haven't seen it. I'm not gonna lie. I, I I do not believe that he was a competitive dog no, groomer at the age of 15. Lie. That's the lie. Which one? Which one? Which one? That's the lie. That's the lie. That's I reckon the, lie? the middle one's a lie. Can we get a reveal? Which one is? He? Oh, okay, you were right. Okay, good. You were right. Good. All right, and Sinatra's got taste apparently as well. Favorite movie one. So <laughs> exactly. Never seen it. No idea what that is. All right, moving on. Uh, which one of these is? The lie. We have a 2016 regional karaoke champion okay. for Danu. Was he once a Roadhog One Trick or uh, was his gamer tag <laughs> sound like Gamer tag sounds like his name is Juan, Juan Wu. Yeah, okay. I'm, is... I'm leaning towards the top one as a lie. I don't know about really? you. Okay, all right. I'll what go with think? you. I'll go with you. Then. Yeah, okay. All right. Good. Wow, Nailing. very easy. I'm sorry. Yeah. Tell all you right. what, though, Nene, up for them. All right. Nene, incredible at karaoke. Actually, one of his biggest yeah. hobbies. All right. True. Well, keeping it moving. Uh, this time for Super, uh, he broke his arm three times. <laughs> he suffered two concussions, <laughs> or he used to unicycle. He used the unicycle. Honestly, the I could believe all of these, because nah, if you used the unicycle, so, you would do those that's, things. That's the lie. I'm I kind of feel like he, I feel like he's skilled enough to unicycle. I feel like unicycle. he's definitely unicycled nah, before. Bro, I'm you, I know Super too well. He's 100% the kind of guy to get two concussions and break his arm three times. <laughs> that is so peak. But what if he did it right in a unicycle? Yeah. That would make sense. Possibly. All right, exactly. moving on. Twilight. Uh, the first video game played was Starcraft for Twilight. Makes sense. Uh, okay. His gamer tag is from the movie Twilight. Or he, uh, he owns the most designer clothes on the Titans. Which one of these is false? I'm not so sure that Twilight is a big fan of the team romance movies, <laughs> uh, Twilight. So I don't think that one is true. Yeah, I, I go with Josh on that. All right, you guys are right. We know you guys we know these guys. We know so them much. through and through. Yeah, you guys don't give yourself enough credit. All right, moving along. Gushue, never seen JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, the Ooh. anime. Ooh, wow, that one that's... offends me. Okay, uh, me and Gushue can't be friends He hates anymore. eating vegetables, or his favorite animal is a penguin. Which one of these is false? This one's impossible. Feel free to no help idea. them out. Bro, Bro, I reckon it's the top one. Like, I, don't, I refuse to believe you haven't seen JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. I, I don't refuse know why. to believe that anybody uh, has. I mean, uh, you guys you're wrong. wrong. You failed. You're wrong. His favorite animal, his favorite animal right. is not Bush a penguin. Which way hit me up, bro? We got we to have a word. What, what is his favorite animal? A gorilla. Well, now we need to find out. A gorilla. Winston. A gorilla? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know that for true, but I'm just throwing it out there. But guys, now that you know a little bit more about our candidates, you can vote on Twitter using the hashtag OWLMVP and the player of your choice or through our new voting system on Twitch. The winner will be decided by your votes as well as ballots from the media members, coaches, casters, and analysts. We'll announce the winner during the season playoffs here at the Blizzard Arena. All right, uh, and guys, do you know who you're voting for yet at all? No, I'm going to wait until the uh, the latest date, honestly. Yeah, you got to okay. wait as long as possible and then see exactly who deserves it. I'm voting for Sinatra. I'm just going to go ahead and throw <laughs> sure. that out there. All right. But, uh, guys, this has been your T-Mobile MVP checkpoint. We got the second half coming your way. It is all tied up. 1-1. One, one. We'll see who can pull ahead right after the break. The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile. Now connecting 99% of Overwatch League fans. Catch your league on America's network, T-Mobile.
Now, if you look on paper, this match uh, looks quite close. 1-1 one, one going into yeah. the half-time map, but both maps were completely one-sided for either team. Started off really well for the Gladiators, but they looked pretty average. <laughs> I mean, Han I'm in a home crowd here. Pretty Han average on Hanamura. Hanamura, they had not won up until that point. Uh, they, up until that point, they didn't win either. So uh, that map, not really close. Uh, Sinatra really pops off on the Tracer, and he really selects it just because he dies at the beginning on Hanzo and then wants to get back quick no. to the next fight. So he ends up staying on Tracer most of the time and ends up working out. He had a look on his face like he couldn't believe it uh, when he was talking to his team up. Like, guys, did you see that? Someone clipped that. Twitch Architect comes back in though for Sinatra. You see, that's it. See, Krusty's mad, bro. You picked a hero he hadn't pre-selected for you. Now you're back on the bench. Super though comes on in. He'll be subbing in for Smurf. So a switch <laughs> up in the tank in the DPS position. Uh, super will come in here now for... He's one of our least seen uh, shock players, actually, this yeah. stage. I, well, with Sinatra getting... Him and Sinatra were both at the bottom with Nevix. Right. And with Sinatra getting playtime in the last map, Super and Nevix on this. I think we need to get him a shake weight. So, uh, you know, it was actually uh, during the first map, I kept looking back at the stage, and I, li I like to look at the stage when we pass one on. You could always see Architect. He was constantly, like, not using the hand warmers, just blowing on his hands. Like, must be really cold up there. So. Uh, he goes into the back, you know, at uh, map number two. Comes what is cold here? You get to wear hoodies. It is pretty I mean. cold. Uh, comes in potentially to play some Widowmaker here on our next map. So you can go to the map set. Uh, it'll be King's Row, like uh -huh. I mentioned for this third map. Okay. Why, uh, let's speculate. Why do you think Super comes in? Yeah. Uh, do, do you want to play Reinhardt here? Uh, yeah, no, because uh, the only other team uh, I've seen do it, it was the Mayhem on uh, Legion. Uh, Legion. I mean, Cal, Reinhardt yeah. has gone from a staple with 3-3 three, three to it, really it's is now me, no man. play at all so bro. please bro just one game bro jeff buff reinhardt please bro <laughs> uh, do you want like uh maybe like a winston if you want to run some dive uh but we've seen smurf do that at times so sure it'll be interesting maybe this is a map where super just has a ton more play time uh, then Smurf, so you're just kind of game planning for a specific map. This is an important map, though. Uh, it is one that Super has a ton of experience on, albeit in different metas with different heroes. Like, we talk about, you know, map stats, but a lot of them aren't necessarily relevant here when we see the game change so much. It will be the Orisa for Super. And I wonder, you know, they, they had the forest selected there. I wonder if we see them swap once they see there's no hit skin on the other side. But it'll be the May for both teams, Reaper for the shot. Super trying to push forward there. Yeah, there you go. The, the, the quickest Hanamura time was NYXL Shanghai last year on Hanamura, so the shocker up there. Wow, getting big goose here. That is huge. Architect uncontested. Finally, everyone turning attention towards it, but he can commit to this fight. Yeah, it's a nice spike to the brain. Unfortunately, doesn't quite give him uh, the same effect as Cryogenesis. He will have to respawn, but it don't matter the shock. They strike early, first blood. And with three players down to the Gladiators, they can't fight back. Yeah, I mean, second fastest hand of time. They're, they're trying to set the fastest time here on King's Row. I mean, that was a lightning quick to take the point. Now they start to get the payload moving. So, uh, sure, four will play Reaper now uh, for the Gladiators. So, you have some changes even in the support. So, Shaz will play the Ana and then Big Goose on the Lucio here. Because they want to take another fight. You're down on ultimates because you switch your comp a bit. So this is you need, to, you need to take a fight earlier, else you're at risk of giving up this point yeah. as well. Because the gladiators lose half their team, and then the other half with a bit of stagger. The shot get past that first choke, and they get to play here. This is an ideal situation for the attacker, and it's a nightmare for the gladiators. You see, sure, for he's looking for something, anything that can get his team the edge. Getting rid of uh, getting rid of super there is pretty darn good, but he's the only one making the impact. It here. is bad for the gladiators. They end up so it, it's good they take the fight. They need to take the fight because they need to you know build some ultimate percentage, and they want to get ultimates out of the shock. The bad part is the shock don't use anything, so they have all they six snowballing. ultimates going into the next fight because of the changes the gladiators make after the first point. They put themselves so far behind. Where they have to be, they have to be really careful here, Mitch. You know, you end up using this blizzard and it doesn't work out. You could get snowballed the whole map. Supercharger down, wall up. Super doesn't care. He's going to push forward anyway. Raw's going to fortify and try and get away, but there's a blizzard being dropped down. Super goes for the fortify. He's not trying to escape the blizzard. He's trying to get as much damage up time as possible. Then he throws the shield down. He's protected behind it. Wall goes up, but Architect gets him. Oh, Raw is able to shut him down on a good body grenade connection by Shaz with the shock. They rode that avalanche all the way.
to the last phase of the map, and they have five and a half minutes They do left. have to use a lot of their ultimates to do it, though. So that's the fight that the Gladiators needed. Now the Gladiators come back. Four ultimates versus just a self-destruct. Man, so the Gladiators want this fight 30 but, seconds ago. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, this is the tough part for the Gladiators. I mean, even if you win this one, they saw that on real time. I don't know. Wall's actually protecting the shock there. Maybe Rascal unaware of that. Boy. See, you remove Super and Shawfall. Thought about hunting for Architect, but he realized he's better served getting rid of tanks. And I think that's a pretty correct assumption to make. He's kept his ultimate as well, mind you. So is Raw. Pretty clean fight win there. And the shock, of course, didn't want to use too much either. I mean, that, that that's a fight you expected to go in favor of the Gladiators. They had so many ultimates. All I had to do was hit the button, and uh, they were pretty much good. As Chayobin uses his self-destruct early on to try and like force positioning, maybe get somebody out of position with the self-destruct in the Maywall. They're not able to manufacture a kickoff of that. This will be Coalescent plus Supercharger so here. And, and all I have to do is back up. So the, the shock just waits this out. So you end up burning both of those ults. You see how teams are using the May wall defensively? Not because they know it's going to last the whole fight, but because they know it'll buy them a couple of seconds to get out of line of sight, to get out of all the damage being thrown at them. So the Gladiators make an offensive gambit, it doesn't pay off, and here's where they may be punished. There's going to be a defensive blizzard from Decay. Rascal straight into Ice Block here. Violet and Big Goose have traded out on the support line of Shawfall. Might have to Death Blossom here to try and secure this fight. Oh no! It's over the edge! They might have needed him there, and now it's going to be the blizzard for the San Francisco Shock. Roar is caught inside of it, desperately. Boyd trying to keep him alive with the defense matrix, but it was a matter of time. Fade now, and just a fade for Shaz. He's getting away, but Big Goose goes down, and well, he didn't escape in the end. And they have, they have Sound Barrier here for the end. They have a Death Blossom Supercharger. And then Violet's going to switch over to Ana, so you have the ability to put Sherfor to sleep if he comes in with a big Death Blossom. In the biotic grenades, is Violet just going to hang out in the back? Decay comes forward, wall off. Most of the gladiators have to wait behind it. Another coalescence here for Shaz. Architect waits it out. He gets Decay despite the healing ultimate being there from Shaz. And now it's a sound barrier. A great time for the San Francisco Shock to get aggressive. And Architect is going to teleport forward. Looking for Big Goose. Supercharger in the corner. And Architect wants to join this party. Death Blossom as soon as Void got desuited. Perfect timing from Architect. He built that one nicely. Shaz getting removed, and that'll be the shock to finish the map. And the Gladiators, I felt like, Matt, they never got purchase on the defense. They were never able to make a strong defensive stand. All the switches for the Gladiators do not pay off, as that'll be the shock who complete the map. Three minutes plus in the time bank. We'll see how the Gladiators fare on offense right after this. The Overwatch League is powered by Intel. Game, record, stream without compromise on Intel Core i7. And by Omen by HP, the official PC and display of the Overwatch League. Los Angeles Gladiators. Uh, this was the, the scene of the crime. Sure for <laughs> over the edge of the map at a rather crucial moment on the defense. They needed that extra source of damage present in the fight, and he just lost his footing. Three minutes and seven seconds. That's how long it well, that's how much time the shock have left, which is 
It's a huge it's amount, amount of time, amount of time. And look, if the Gladiators finish the map, uh, you know, with less than a minute left, then that's just going to get boosted up more. They have to finish the map, though, first. We'll see what the uh, Gladiators decide to run. Uh, maybe, you know, if they keep these supports with the Zin and the Lucio, you think they're going to go for, like, a, you know, something more of, like, a dive or something that involves snipers playing on their own? Uh, they make a change, though. So now they have Big Goose play the Batiste and Decay will play May. So they have him go out on Sombra, they scout, they see what the other team's running, and then they come back and decide to make some changes. So they bring in the Zenyatta here. So the Zen provides a little bit of extra damage. Maybe oh you can catch Trio and oh dear! burst him down. Two supports. Cut off for the rest of the team. Trichoven just had to hit that hook. See, he, he can't really get too aggressive though. The Discord and then another hook comes through and he's dead. He dies 1v2 against those supports. And, and he's the one that's got a contest point. Well, there was no biotic grenade available for either of so Maybe he could have just tanked, tanked it out. Dead. Yeah, trouble. Oh, oh, they keep him alive. That is incredible. Eventually goes down to Shaz. Boyd's been out and do a lot of work here. Gets taken down. Rascal out of Discord Orb, forcing the ice block immediately. Trikobin now needs to deal with Decay. One of them does at least, but Decay's making himself very scarce. Trying to hide behind the post box, but it's no TARDIS and it's not going to get the shock out of dodge here. Architect is actually playing uh, off the point. With, with Violet getting caught out here, this could be a bit of a struggle. Valiant from the Ar Architect, man. Gets two kills, but that's not enough yet. The Zen pick pays off. As Shaz comes in, they pick up two. Architect's trying to flank because he knows as they approach the point, the Zenyatta's going to be very deadly against the Roadhog. So they bring in uh, Trioba now onto D.Va. So the D.Va gives them a little bit more of an option with the Reaper in play to make a, a dive attempt for Shaz in the back line. I like it. Look, it facilitates Architect to do a bit more when he has Death Blossom or even when he doesn't. Just that defense makes it pretty important. Dragon Strike here. This is just a forced positioning. Oh, I see. They set up the amplification matrix to try and catch people crossing away from the dragon, but the timing, not quite there. It really has to be centimeter perfect, and it wasn't on this occasion. Architect took a bit hit there. Sure, we're going to play from the high ground. Transcendence here for Shaz. The big use's immortality field has been taken down. No one answering Shawpo right now because Chokobin does not have the health to go up there and challenge. Still, he had the health to get rid of Decay. Architect is down. Super holding a close angle here. Defense matrix thrown out behind him, and Void's in trouble. Troy Kevin trying to catch him out. Oh, clever from Void to try and fake the escape and then come back, but Troy was ready. They're able to get a hold here of the shock, but they had to use all of their ultimates to do it. Biotic grenade from Violet at the beginning of the fight, and then he actually hits a sleep on a Void, so it takes him out of the equation. Is it worth it? Using a Blizzard. Is this choke that important to you that you want to spend so many ultimates so, on? So I think, I, I think it is. I think it is because of the fact that now the Gladiators, to get through the choke, are going to be forced to use some of their ultimates. So they do split super off. There's going to be an immortality field that keeps them alive. Yeah, I, he's loving it. He's actually pretty close to full health as well. Raw supercharge is taken down. Super gets his revenge. That is nutty. Sure for. Oh, Rascal wakes him up there. Yeah. Violet actually put him to sleep. Wall comes up from the wall's no block blizzard, so Rascal is going to get wrecked here if he's not careful. Yeah, defense matrix from both Divas, but there was no chance of keeping him alive. Decay can now chase after Architect, who's going to run back behind that amplification matrix. Still, the Gladiators want to get aggressive in towards this. Defense matrix, so important. Void protecting his team from the amplified damage coming through the window. Nicely done. Yeah, they end up using a nano boost, the shock, on the Rascal, on the May, and they don't get anything for it. He's not able to stay alive much longer after that. They switch off of Diana and they'll play Moira. So a mirror matchup in terms of the supports of the tanks and the damage dealers now. I can't believe two and a half years on, we are seeing the Beyblade meta. Okay. <laughs> Especially with the honor that was in the mix for Violet, he switched off now. Last time I saw that mineral was in China. Yeah, I don't. Oh, okay. What the heck was that? Was that intentional? I wonder. Very interesting. Uh, it kind of slides down the railing. So you, I, you get a pick on the supers. You may not even be able to challenge this without the main tank. I don't think he intended that. Uh, either way, give him the benefit of the doubt. How about that? Sure, if I'm going to teleport across the Death Blossom here, would be pretty devastating. And yeah, good connection. And the timing was perfect. Troy Kerfman was just in the D suit animation when he went for it. So full value has been claimed. Yeah, they used Death Blossom and Blizzard to push themselves over the line. So now the Gladiators with 3 minutes and 36 in the bank trying to make a push towards map completion. Jump back up to their spawn, sure for. Uh, has to Wraith walk there, otherwise he's going to get the, yoinked into the shock. The shock are going to have a fight window, you would think. Supercharger here, 
it's going to be Coalescence. They have a Blizzard and Death Blossom to use too. They have to get value here though, man. Architect, Wraith Walk now, forced to go back to the rest of his team. The Supercharger is still up. Oh, wall placed. Architect, surely, thinking about a Death Blossom there. Shawfall was in Wraith Walk himself. He would have come out of it. Big Goose though taken down. He was in the pit, but Violet finished him off with a Bionic Grasp. And Shawfall now is being chased down. But look at that. Choke Oban making it sure it was a slanted 1v1 advantage to Architect, who frankly couldn't be hit. Now it's big for the shock. They they have that sound barrier to use here. They can hold on to it. They can use it to protect, like, let's say, the self-destruct comes through. Blizzard is really, I think, what they're ideally seeking it for is uh, Architect lurking up in the rafters yeah, here. Big Goose scouts it out. A team like the Gladiators will check this one 10 times out of 10. This puts Architect in an awkward spot. They could have warded up. Oh, boy! That self-destruct! Nice wall. Lovely block there from Rascal. Saw that one coming a mile off. Boy's gonna have to get it done without it now. Rascal being protected, but only to do so much. Shriek Urban actually gonna be ended up giving up his life to try and keep his May alive. Can he resuit? The answer is yes. Void unable to pick him off before he jumps back into the mech. Shriek Urban's positioning still not ideal. Now he's gonna back up to the rest of his team. The Coalescence gonna smooth over some of the bumps here for the shock. But Choi eventually gets caught once more. Sure for in Architect. That Death Blossom, he held it for so long, Matt. And when it finally came out, it looked god awful. Yes, Choi Hillman actually is, uh, uses his defense matrix and just spinning around in circles, trying to find the May, maybe eat the Blizzard up, but <laughs> it does not work out as the Blizzard is good from Decay. That'll be Roar using the Supercharger right up near the spawn door. So he's trying to deter the shock from coming out. Super wants to fight it. They're going to use the sound barrier as well. Yeah, nice play. Getting rid of that Supercharger now. Shawfall gets in the back line, but Architect trying to keep him at bay. Coalescence used and Shawfall's healed up as he uses Wraith Walk. Then the sound barrier comes on and that Reaper is unkillable. One minute, 29 seconds remain here for Los Angeles. Gladiators is not the best time at finishing the map. Is all they're trying to get done right now. Choke open to the skies. He is desuited. Violet has the Cold Lessons, the Rascals able to freeze up Shaw 4, one more shot would have gotten the job done, but the healing was there for Shaw 4, and Tetsumi lives on. That's going to be the Roadhog on the point, Super just going to try and take a breather and mitigate as much damage as possible, but it's just stall and nothing but. Gladius and the rest of the Gladiators squad looking pleased about that one. The fact is, it's a two minute deficit in time bank for the Gladiators, they are reasonably far behind the eight ball, so they need to get their skates on. And no, I don't mean just pick Lucio and hope for the best. A little bit more work to be done here. We'll be back in just a moment with extra innings. Gladiators must attack again, having the lesser of the two time banks here after King's Row. And still an admirable one minute and five seconds, and a lot hinges on their first push on this point. Yeah, the Shark got a lot of time to play with, though, in their bank. Right, three minutes. You can play a little bit close if you want here, the Shark. You can play a little bit aggressive, kind of force them to make mistakes. As Even if they were to take the point, you still have that two-minute advantage in terms of starting time bank. So. Okay, so Raleigh just uh, maybe fire a rocket off here. Yep, now the switch is going to come in. Yeah, Helix rocket body shot. So it is an option there. So we won't see the double sniper cop. This seems to be the, the go on this map. New goats, as some people are calling it. <laughs> that, has no, that has no real intuitive meaning. But Rascal's gone down early here. Sure for. Good, good uh, discipline actually to back away when he did there. He's able to get healed up by Shaz. And, Moth overextends into Void. This is a great start for the Gladiators. Maybe the Shock just got a little bit ahead of themselves now and there's no escape. The Ice Wall goes up and Shawfo plunges into their midst. The Hellfire shotguns are Kimbo and the kills are coming. Yeah, it's the Shock they were trying to back out. The Gladiators wisely, they pushed past the point, didn't just sit on the point, let them play the next choke. Uh, the Gladiators fans starting to come alive here in the venues. They will take the point, they'll unlock the payload. Still have a ways to go though. And if you're the shock, no reason to panic. You got a coalescence here. You can play close. Coalescence is gonna have to be enough, but Shaz will have his soon as well. That is likely the only ultimate from either side that we'll see in this fight. It depends how long it is. If you decay gets somewhere with a blizzard, that would be backbreaking for the shock. 
Great wall though. Trying to segment super off. Shock's one looks a bit better though. Look at this. They catch Big Goose on their side of the map. And using the choke, there's nothing the Gladiators can do about it. Coalescence has come out from both. Sure for now having to contend with Violet in the back line. He's still looking. Violet, instead of healing his diva, goes for the damage on Sure for and they lose trick over its face. Here it is, Death Blossom in the middle of it now. Blizzard finally come out from Rascal, but it doesn't really get much done. And the Gladiators look like they're still on the run. Architect forced back and silenced. Wow. Yeah, you definitely save some of these ultimates towards the end if you're the shock, but the Gladiators put it together. Some nice May walls from Decay, the Blizzard. They're forced to use the Supercharger as well. You will have sound barrier here for the Gladiators. And if it's a good one, you may be able to outlive some of this damage that's coming through. Around a corner we go. That second checkpoint is looming. And the Shock need to put the brakes on now. Here it is. Supercharger thrown down. Architect trying to push forward straight into a hole. He's forced to rate walk and now has to go aggressive. But it's going to be a defense matrix from Void. Covers up most of that damage and they get the reply and kill on Architect. Sound barrier notwithstanding. It wasn't enough. Decay pushing forward now. He's caught Rascal and he has him in his sight. The icicle to the face was his sentence. And that's not looking good for the Shock. They're still trying, struggling to put things together. Maybe Big Goose lost is a, is a way to slow the momentum down a little bit here for the Gladiators, oh, they're but they're showing it. no signs of stopping, and the Shock had to get out. They're worried about getting snowballed. They're going to try and defend again, but it doesn't look good. This is horrible for the Shock as the Gladiators... There it is. They will take the second point. They also have Blizzard self-destruct. Supercharger coming into the next one as... This is looking like they may be able to run through the map yet again, which would be unreal starting with only a minute. This is what a snowball looks like, ladies and gentlemen. They want to fight. They're in a great position. The Shock may not know this. Hard to track ultimates at this part of the game when you're losing every fight. Self-destruct goes over the top of from Void, but Sure for gets two, combining for four, the two of them. Choi Hoven bowled over once more. Rascal attempts to stall here, but he will be back in spawn. And the Shock... We'll have yeah. one more chance to prevent the valley, uh, the Gladiator, should I say, from getting a full map completion and, here. And Moth has not been able to build towards Sound Barrier because they've just been getting rolled in these fights. As Big Goose has the chance to potentially get Sound Barrier during this, could turn the tide. Shawfall sure making his way around. The Snow Dome is erected in the middle of the point. There it is. Shawfall sure comes in now to reap his way through. Sound Barry here, big boost now, Chuck Oven desuited and Shawfall gonna bite his time. He's been chased down by Architect, looking to try and life steal a little bit to stay in the fight and it's worked perfectly. He's back to full health and the Gladiators are on a riot now. Architect has to come in, try and intervene with the Death Blossom. Only finds the one kill and Raw's gonna have to be enough. Shaz down, Architect finds his second, but Shawfall finding Rascal now. The May is out of the pitch and the crowd control is gone. <laughs> and this crowd is on their feet. The Los Angeles Gladiators go from zero to hero on King's Row, now set themselves up with a real chance to win the map. They have a minute and three seconds, Matt, and with that, they get three checkpoints. They finish the whole map. That is momentum. That is nuts. As Sureforce has been popping off on the Reaper. Oh yeah, he's feeling it. 39 of limbs, 20 final blows, 30% of the team's damage. With 20K damage right now, I mean, Surefor is going crazy on Reaper here against the Shock. And the Shock have to be stud. Uh, you see the box of victory. The box of victory is the end of the map. Another completion of King's Row. Matt, the Shock win the map. That doesn't mean that, uh, well, they finished the map, sorry. That doesn't mean they Oh, no, we keep going. In, in a series like this, that I can accept. Three minutes. For some teams, it's not enough to get the map done. It looks so good for the Shock. This is reminiscent, actually, of, of their Stage 1 final against the Vancouver Titans. Yeah, I remember that. And the Titans just ran them through. I was, I was thinking back to that match, actually, during, the, during this overtime. I was like, I remember when the, they they stormed through Rialto against the Vancouver Titans, and then the Vancouver Titans come do it even faster than them. Right? They break a record to do it. I believe they even had a game against the Titans in that matchup that on King's Row that was very similar to how this has gone. Is a big goose on the high ground here with Shaz, so you'll have the Batiste and Ana in play. So we're going to be having the Immortality Field for the low ground if you want to contest the point. You also have the Ant Matrix here to give Sherp or even extra damage on the Hanzo. How the, how the shot getting up there outside of Trick Open. The Gladiators will give some progress here when that, it's time to strike. When they hit a big Bionade or Sure Force, sick of getting uncontested damage in the back line, they'll go forward. Two ticks now. 
Gladiators have to make their move, but Decay has gone down. This might have backfired. Raw's caught up against the wall. He has to walk outside of his barrier. Now Architect takes to the high ground, but Big Goose, that's the sleep done. Shaz, the Sandman comes in, and Architect has to get out of dodge. Still, Super's able to find Raw now. Up to the high ground goes Void. Architect playing around the hotel. Void frozen solid. Now he will take damage from the Coalescence of Violet's not interested in healing at this point. The shock. It has to be speed. They have to get through this map quickly now. And that is a very annoying location for an immortality field. Eventually it's removed and so is sure for. Just burn clock. If you're the gladiators, that's all you need to do is just burn the clock, burn the clock, get some of these big impactful ultimates, and then win one fight. Big Goose will switch over to Lucio and sure for will go over and play Reaper. So you reset the ultimates. He's other Dragon Strike used during that. Don't believe he's close to another one. And then you're not going to use the Ant Matrix because uh, you don't really have anybody who's shooting at long range on through it. So you wouldn't get a ton of value out of it. Hold on to your hats. It's about to get wild. Rascal throws out the wall here. The Gladiators are forced to stand and fight. No choice but to commit. Rascal catches Big Goose on the way through with a headshot with the icicle. And Raw fares no better. Another connection. Shawful got himself the Nano Boost here. What can he do? It's only Rascal take it down. He needs to get more done. But the Nano Boost has expired. And so is his life force. Roy though, a baby diva on the cart, just uh, extends it, go 10, 15 more seconds in this type of scenario, you're just trying to dwindle the clock. This will heal you are able, seconds. if you're the, the shock I mean, it's huge that the rascal wall is so good that it allows you just to use supercharger to take that, you don't have to blizzard. Uh, it looks like the gladiator is going to come in and fight this again. They will have a blizzard. Moth needs to stay out of it. Needs to come land a big sound barrier. Last time two teams went to 12 rounds, it was the rain versus the charge in stage two. The shock have to do that if they want to stay in this map. Architect sees the wall. Decay straight into ice block now. That supercharger not being wasted, but they're not getting full value out of it. Architect does note the position of Shaw for behind him, but he can't really do anything about it right now. It's too risky. Diva Bomb goes in. Troy Hoban definitely hit by that one, even with the sound barrier. He gets desuited. He goes for a self destruct of his own now, but the cage already gone down here. Al Shaw for he's shut down during his death blossom. The Blizzard finds his mark, but he's still able to fight the old fashioned way. Blocked off by the wall. The shock. They've stayed alive in this fight, but they need to win it. Troy Hoban, not with them yet, but Super returns on the wrecking ball now. Pile driver in. Death blossom from Architect. That one looked a little better. And the shock aren't done yet. They keep it going, so Super's gonna go back to the spawn. He's gonna go right back over to Orisa, but you needed to use everything you had there if you're the shock to get it over the line. As Moth is actually forced to use Sound Barrier probably earlier in that fight than he would have liked, as the self-destruct from Void is good. They follow that self-destruct up right with their Blizzard, but it's still not enough. Rascal getting very close to another Blizzard and a Coalescence here from Violet. As the way the Gladiators are playing, they're playing for one more fight here. All they need to do, let the payload move, find an early pick, that would be massive. Another great wall from Rascal, though it's going to be a sound barrier for the Gladiators to smooth out the beginning of this fight, and it works! Oh yeah, no, Rascal Blizzard, it's gone! Into the void! And Rascal will also be removed now, what a shameful way to exit, but not much he could do. Architect now forced into right port, the Coalescence is active currently, but it's only healing right now for Violet, and just doesn't go far enough! Off the back of the point with Spot, there it is! Talk about shields up. The LA Gladiators know that the best defense is a good offense, and they show that on their second time through the map. Six checkpoints in one minute with a bit of overtime action. That's how the, the Gladiators like to do it. And that's what our fans like to see. The Shock now start to find themselves in a compromising position. They need to win this next map to keep it alive to find the map five. Gladiators lead by one. The Overwatch League is brought to you by T-Mobile, now connecting 99% of Overwatch League fans. Catch your league on America's network, T-Mobile.
不许走。We've seen some amazing skill this season, but in the end, there can only be one pro that takes home the Overwatch League MVP award, sponsored by the good folks at T-Mobile. New players have risen through the ranks to become stars, while league veterans fight to remain on top. Now, the time has come to immortalize another player in the halls of esports legends and crown the 2019 Overwatch League MVP, presented by T-Mobile. Here are your MVP finalists. Sinatra has been playing like a man possessed. Sinatra. Janu is certainly up there. Best diva in the league. Janu. <laughs> Super. Twilight gets in there, so but Twilight can handle himself. Twilight. Is Plan Rageous? I've never seen a player who's more mechanically skilled, I think. Gushwe. The winner will be determined by you, the fans, as well as Overwatch League casters and analysts. Cast your vote on Twitter using hashtag OwlMVP and the player's battle tag, or during any remaining regular season broadcast on Twitch. Voting ends on August 25th, so let your voice be heard. It's your league, your decision. Who will you choose as this season's T-Mobile Overwatch League MVP? That's it, fam. It's your league, and it's time to cast your vote for the T-Mobile MVP for the Overwatch League. Vote for your favorite finalists on the Twitch overlay. Are right there uh, in the corner of your screen or on Twitter with hashtag OWL MVP and the players battle tag. Get those votes in today. They're open through, as you can see, August 25th. It's, uh, super. Definitely a, uh, one of the candidates for that award. Undoubtedly, he's on the, he's on the list. He's, uh, he's on that uh, beautiful video, looking all tough. Yeah. Hitting them shadows. So I think he's definitely got a really strong case for it. As, uh, I think him and uh, Sinatra, both leaders of the Shock team, they've been a very strong team throughout the Overwatch League season this far. Uh, they, you know, they they make the stage finals a bunch of times. Uh, it, it really not a, a strong argument against them. So these two teams might play together in week one. Very long time ago. And the Gladiators uh, were victorious in that matchup as well. Uh, at that point, it's such a different shock. But at this point, it's such a different shock as well, right? I mean, this is a very different shock. And you have to wonder, uh, you know, how players like Super are adjusting over to these sort of roles. Obviously, Architect is in the mix here. The roster they're fielding currently is for, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's mostly uh, the same as where many of their wins have, uh, have been come from. Yeah, I mean, you're really just subbing out this Architect. Ar Architect for Sinatra, and you're, you're back to the lineup that you're at. Over to Havana for map number four, and a must win for the San Francisco Shock here. They've had a pretty good record on it, on it so far, but the Gladiators just haven't played it as many times. And I wonder if the Shock are doing kind of a little bit how they did at the beginning of the season, where you remember back in stage one, it's a very long time ago now, but they, they were playing uh, like Smurf and them on uh, control maps. They were playing Architect on control maps. They were really settling in on a roster. And then after like two, three weeks, they settled. They're like, okay, this is the squad, right? They started playing Sinatra, Rascal, Super, 100% of the time. And I wonder if that's what you're seeing them decide right now. Like which group of these players were the best? Yeah, they're vetting their meta. role lock roster. Yeah, just know? kind of vetting the roster again. Uh, you'd hate to go to finals, you know, and fall out and then regret not sort of trying a few other options. And I'm sure there's people that are like, oh, well, why can't they do that in scrims and figure it out? It's just not the same as uh, Trey over there. Like, oh! oh, nice shot there by Architect. Uh, you can, it's stuff you just can't test in scrims. Like, it's just not the same level of intensity. Like, and even for players, it's hard to get to that point in a scrimmage and you know, take it that serious. No, it's not. The, like, the amount of players I talk to me say that a good portion of their scrims sometimes don't have a lot of value is quite high. I mean, look, if, if, if you go scrimming, people are eating to the side, people are like, uh, you know, it's been like a long day, you're not really focused on like that game. It, it's impossible to get a actual read on how they would do in a live competitive setting. So I think the best way to do it is to just do it live. And I think the shock, you have some games, you can mess around with Architect takes out oh, the game. His Hanzo's been on point. Ah, oh, you hate to see it. The guard, I need this ultimate that's fine. I'll build up another one quickly enough. And while that may be true, a Dragon Strike here would be nice. There's still a chance for the Gladiators to, to get a defense here. Sure 4 finds the assassination, then heads back to his own back line. Raw, though. Staying as well, perhaps just a little bit. And Architect knows that Sure 4 is about to head up to the high ground. 
It's only interesting, the, uh, the only players we haven't seen for the Shock so far in this series have been Nevix and Striker. Sure. We don't see Striker in this one. Uh, Striker on the Widowmaker has oh, yeah. been a strong pick. Maybe it's something they see with the Gladiators. This will be a Coalescence, and that'll be a delete. <laughs> like, basically, instantly, when that Coalescence comes out from Shaz, Violet just does a 360, hits a Sleep Dart, and that'll be first point take here for the Shock. The Death Blossom is, is all well and good there for sure, for, but it's a little bit too late. The checkpoint's already been achieved. Yeah, look, on the, on the Striker, a topic. It's just possible that he wasn't ready, man. Uh, you know, he did get kind of thrown into the fire there in that Shanghai game in the in the stage three finals. You know, that was the first time we'd seen him for quite some time, and you have to go up against the Shanghai Dragons. You know, well, your uh, first okay. match back. I mean, uh, as Rascal gets a pick here to start things off and see if the Gladiators can make a play out of this. Uh, spoiler alert: There's Dragon Immortality Field. Doesn't look like they can. Uh, I get that you haven't seen Striker in a while, and I, like I said, it's really hard to uh, recreate the owl environment in scrimmages and whatnot. But he is like an he is a top three MVP candidate from last year, Striker. It's not like it's not like you're taking somebody who's new to Overwatch League and really needs to get used to like the pace and level of play. This guy was at the top of the level of play last year, so. You expect him to come in? I think Striker's still, look, I think it's way too early to kind of write him off. I think he could be a huge part of this team. Not the strike by Void. This is just to try and force the shock away from using his air matrix, but that placement, absolutely perfect. There is no way the Gladiators can engage them without subjecting themselves to the amplified damage from that matrix. Very clever positioning. And you saw the Gladiators got mowed over. Void just like tries to put a self-destruct out there to deter them. It just doesn't work. Big Goose changes over to Mercy and then Shaz goes to Zen. I wonder if you see it's like a double sniper set up potentially. The K on the May though has a blizzard. So, okay, so Big Goose will change as well. So now he'll play the Batista. They're not going to play the Mercy. So now you probably see them stay with this composition. And uh, this has not been close as the Shock are rolling through Havana. So you may Front see line. another dragon here, Supercharger. All the day. Super gets airborne. He was discorded as well. That was a little bit risky for him. Yeah, immortality field placed down. Still, Big Goose is going to be taken down by Architect. He's just fishing right now. No dragon strike here from the low ground. I know what you were thinking. I was thinking the same thing. Another headshot. Architect is hitting heads like crazy. Trick Urban going to push up there. The wall is now down, and the Clan is going to replace it with one of their own. They do not want to fight currently. They are very much underpowered by comparison. But they may not have a choice. That's why Roadhog is a thing. And you're going to have this supercharger for the final fight. The K switches over. And he'll play the Widowmaker here. Sure Force able to find the pick on Architect. That's ah, huge. Look at that. Choi Hoban waiting for the hook from Void. See, Moonman was right. You don't hook first. You wait for the other Roadhog to do it. Immortality field has to be used here. Troy Kerbin wasn't inside of it initially, had to step into it. Okay, the Shocks still need to be able to push out of here and look kind of strong. They throw down the supercharges, and that's how they begin this fight. Rascal could go to the high ground, but yeah, okay, he's going to do that with the wall, get rid of Decay. I mean, Void is there. Rascal just ignoring him right now. He can't finish the kill. He keeps two heroes busy, and he actually gets a Blizzard there. That, he locks him up top. That's really nice. Void gets frozen in that one as well. Shaz was able to avoid it for the most part, but Rascal straight back up there. Two shakes of a lamb's tail, and he finishes what he started. Uh, the Shock finishing off Havana with... Honestly, a ton of time again. Three but... minutes plus. Yeah, but we saw how King Throw is... went. <laughs> this is eerily similar to what we just saw. So they complete Havana. It's like Three the NBA minutes, match. Nine seconds. Oh, ain't nobody playing defense. Not a lot of defense. No, I mean, they, they just get paid for the highlights. They ain't trying to play D. <laughs> <laughs> Think anyone's making cool, uh, you know, Instagram videos of Architect on defense holding uh, holding points? No, they're just watching the dragon. It's a very it's a very unglamorous way to play, but yeah. every team has to do it for half of a map, so you can't really blame them. Yeah. Huh. Never do. Yeah, kind of. They do. I, I mean, they're forced to. I mean, you have to go on the defensive side. Of things, so. All right. Well, how does Overwatch work if both teams attack at the same time? It's all <laughs> control. <laughs> oh dear. That's where you see it really shine. It's, man, I, the Gladiators, there's no way they're going to be able to do this again, right? I mean, you put yourself behind the behind the eight ball on King's Row, and you're able to make, like, a miraculous run. It is miraculous. Let's be clear about it, that. It is a miraculous run. Uh, can you do it again? Uh, these pigeons seem to think so. Yo, I haven't had a pasty in years. Do you guys Why are there America? so many pigeons? Yeah, you have pasties out here? Yeah, we get we have, we have a place that doesn't buy us. But. Cornish pasty, I need yeah, you don't you don't go outside much, so you You, you go out way pasties. less than I do, bro. You can't say that. That's uh, debatable. Look at your complexion, bro. You get no uh, Come on, it's, man. It's debatable. It's debatable. The only time you're darker than I am is when you get a fake tan, brother. 
Oh, that, that ain't true. Now you're just throwing out lines. <laughs> oh. uh, season one, by the way. Watch the box. <laughs> it was fake 10. I was also standing on an eight foot box in season one at one point, I believe. But it's, uh, maybe double saber? Question mark? They haven't decided to run it uh, at all. Maybe really. just from spawn? Yeah, probably just from spawn. Oh. They've really committed to the May Reaper from point one on. As uh, Violet hits a biotic grenade, pretty much everybody is. It'll do a grapple shot to K Will. Finds a hit on Violet, no kill. He's staying on his widow. Oh man, punished for it though. Okay. Doesn't really hurt the gladiators too much. They just come back into the fight, but the K still staying on the widow. Okay, so what are they going for here? Maintaining double sniper push out of here. I, uh, double sniper here in this scenario. It looks like they're trying to throw some halt up in the sky, probably connect with a headshot or some storm arrows. And just try and manufacture a pick, but the K already. He gets he gets picked off by Architect Crossman. He'll play now. Is he? That'll be an early Ant Matrix out from Big Goose. This will buy them some space to push the card up. Nice. Super just stays on it, just trying to contest it for a bit. But I mean, in some senses, right? If you are playing Orisa, Roadhog, and if you do have a sniper there, you're almost guaranteed, you know, to have an easy shot for your Widowmaker to, to yeah. have a crack at, right? If someone gets yoinked up that high. So now the shock though is, let's see how they come out on D here. To hold point A potentially. Uh, do you use this Ant Matrix? Do you use Blizzard? I think with the way Architect shoot, throw down the Ant Matrix, give him a few seconds, see if he can get a pick, and then commit to something else. But be Dragon at the beginning, I'm sure. We're just trying to buy some space. Yeah, he didn't look like he was overly satisfied with that. The way it came off, as soon as he let it go, he's just like, nah, it's probably not going to do too much. Storm Arrow. Oh, that's nasty. And the Biotic Grenade as well. So he has to play very carefully for the next couple of moments. Blizzard thrown out though. The shots just didn't look very good in general. Void gets the hook. Oh! Oh! He's in the fade away. Steps onto the point. Dragon Strike gonna shave a lot of health off, but at the end of the day, he is Roadhog. They use everything. Violet now Violet has used the nano on a Trioven when they're For what? It's like a it's like a five on three. Maybe uh, you see the well Trioven's almost that whole hog. He's probably not going to switch. Are you switching supports here? Like, what is the idea here for the shock? Is you burn through everything, trying to hold on point A. Throwing bad ultimates uh, off to good. And, and now, and now the other team, you know, they have a Blizzard, they have Dragon Strike. I mean, they're going to have a huge ultimate advantage. And at this stage of the map, you can get through, you know, pretty quickly. Two fights. Are we going to see like both teams complete again, like King Throw? And Matt's already imagining it. I mean, that's the shock need the map five here. They can't be messing around on a map like this. Is the Dragon Strike coming through plus the Blizzard? Yeah, Super was completely wedged in an L-shaped corner with nowhere to go. And that's a, a big investment to get rid of an Orisa and see if it pays off. Oh, Troy Coben down the whole front line is missing, and yeah, looks like it worked out just fine. And, and Rascal is <laughs> so far behind here, as Rascal could end up getting staggered out. They're doing a nice job of just keeping Violet alive. Should have just cut his losses, man. Rascal's so far away. R Rascal's back behind. They're just trying to spawn camp. This is not. No, this is when a spawn camp turns into a stagger. Let them up. I, I mean, I guess uh, sh for the sake of Rascal, sure, Boar's not there, but it's still not good. I mean, th this has been a mess here for the shock. Nice on little defense. climb extension here for the gladiators, Matt. Cha Ching, four and a half minutes. And they can finish with e equal pace as the shock, and just when we thought San Francisco would maybe breeze through and get that map five, now it's looking. And, and this blizzard, this blizzard from Rascal needs to be good. Like uh, if you use this blizzard and get nothing for it, you can see the ultimate percentages here for the gladiators. They'll build up pretty quickly. Is they trying to get a hook here? Right, so now they put him on the wall. Maybe they were trying to halt him off the wall. Is that's an immortality field thrown downrange by Big Goose? There, I'm not sure what the purpose was there. Supercharger Raw just places it around the corner, making it hard to get to. Yoinking Choiko over here, and that's an easy pick off here. Teleport coming from Architect. What is he looking for in a backline? You got Big Goose, that's all he's going to get though. And there was a Nana Boost committed to that as well. Another ultimate again. The Shock just throwing something at the wall, trying to see if something sticks, and Void, yeah, in place he does stick. Rascal now to try and maybe finish off Raw, but he had a shield cooldown, so he just banks that one up and sits pretty behind it. They needed that blizzard to be good. And now, the, now the gliders can just kind of stabilize, right? A few seconds have gone off the clock, but apparently you got full white rather quickly. 
You have the opportunity to use your own Blizzard here, Dragon Strike. They're gonna get a hook on the Super as he gets low and then taken out. Yeah, not where he wanted to be at all. And Shawfall finds Rascal, who was, in all fairness, trying to 1v1 him for the entirety of the pre-fight. Hanzo now really starting to make that impact. Shawfall with 12 final blows on this map, just dominating. With those early pickoffs, being able to get those halt hooks, it allows you to save some of these ultimates. They just use Dragon Strike there, and they hold on to their blister. Yeah. This is going to be a force of ice block Think here. back to 3-3, three, three, Matt. Teams are only winning fights and getting kills when they're using ultimates. Yeah. Now, you don't have to do that. You can save them. If you're if you're good at rationing them out or good at getting picks without ultimates, then you're going to dominate in this meta. But he gets blown up there, Decay. That's going to be the nano boost that goes down. On Architect, he's able to just plow through three. It's a really fast team fight goes in favor of the shock there. Can they slow down the Gladiators here? I mean, they, they kind of got past that ultimate drought, Matt. You know, they said they just had the Blizzard Rascal had to really connect with that. So now they want to take close quarters fights, the Gladiators. They move away from Hanzo here, so they lose all their long range damage. They're going to bring in a Reaper of their own. They're going to bring in D.Va. Lucio and Moira here. Sure for Turf deep flank left side. Force got behind them on the left side. Surely they've heard him though. They must have heard the sound cue from the teleport because it was quite it's, close. It's changed a bit where you can't hear it as loud as it was before. Well, they get in position. This is great setup here for the Gladiators. Now they go chase after Architect who has to go immediately into Wraith form. No one's caught in the Blizzard though. And the, the self-destruct will buy a little bit more time and space for the shock and now they throw the Supercharger down. Architect for the time being is safe on that high ground. Careful not to get moved off the edge of the map. I don't think he wants to be here. Right form, back to the safety of Super. And Shoyko, oh, we tried to go for the teleport, but that was a critical error. Now they've lost the Reaper, and they're still moving towards the point. The Blizzard there. Oh, wow, that is absolutely questionable positioning. Super at least is able to get rid of Shaw for him. Big Goose is frozen up on the payload void, trying to keep him alive, and it works. Just a little bit of defense mate. just goes a long way, and still that's not enough. Violet getting rid of Decay. And I feel like the shock just got a stay of execution, Matt. That looked like it could have gone horribly for them. Oh, but it's Violet yet again. He gets the nano boost on the Architect, and then he hits a Biotic Grenade that connects with three, and they're able to take those players out. It's the Gladiators right now, they're all in on this close quarters battle. Running the Lucio Moira and the Reaper and the May. They were making good progress with Sherpour on the Hanzo, and they decided to switch off it here towards the end. Finally, they found some stability, and they've been able to keep multiple fights with ultimates going into them. This time, it will be a Death Blossom for Architect. He's been known to hold these for quite a while this series so far. This one has to be decisive. Nice job by Viola there. He's able to spot out Shaw 4, and Shaw 4 be out of position for a brief time. Wall comes up, Salmer has to be thrown in there, Roar and Void, the two tanks are here with Blinding Grenades, that's huge! Big Goose went for the Salmer, but that's all but timed out, and now the Shock will get theirs, Architect in, Death Blossom being mostly covered up by the Defense Matrix, and now he's locked in a battle with Shaw 4, he ups out of that one! Great form, back towards the health pack now, he'll return, but Shaw 4 really playing aggressively at the front of the cart, who's gonna protect the team from the self-destruct, Shoko gets Big Goose, Void finds nothing, now Architect drops back in, this is when he springs forward, when the Blizzard has rendered his opponents immobile, and there will be the damage thrown into the San Francisco shot. Finally find their footing here on Havana. And they will take us to a map five affair. The Bay Area boys keep it alive. Shock barely hold on there as the Gladiators push was looking pretty good, but they will force a game five. You have to wonder if the Shock would love to get a replay of King's Row as they were up pretty good in that one. We'll see how this series pans out. One more map after this.
them up. tiebreaker map in the last match of the day and frankly we wouldn't have it any other way the san francisco shock and the gladiators renew their rivalry here after week one stage one it's all on the line here so, got a little glimpse of uh spoil alert there for the shock but this one goes the distance so we talked about how the gladiators they've struggled in terms of their map count against top teams they played the shock tough today Super, he'll go out. Smurf comes in here for game five control. Uh, so Smurf, he played games one and two, and now game five. If you remember the start of this series, control uh, it was not good for the San Francisco Shock. They looked it was brutal. Okay. It wasn't close. Uh, we'll, we'll be honest with, with the same lineup they have it now. Yeah, Decay was in there, short four was dominating. Also worth bearing in mind, we saw Decay really run away with the game uh, against the Chongyu Hunters uh, on Tracer uh, towards the end of that series. Kind of like Sinatra did on Hanamura. So, Keep an eye on this guy. A little quieter this series because he's been on May duty, right? It's not the most glamorous job. You don't get to pick up all the kills like the Reaper or Hanzo player, but again, look out for those walls. The Blizzard timings are very important. I think if you're the, sh the Shark and uh, Shark fans, you saw Sinatra come in, play really good on Hanamura. And then you saw Super come in. They played really good on King's Row. I mean, but, uh, I mean they, they played an incredible game on King's Row, which is just the Gladiators put together a crazy overtime push. But they win both games that Super's in. Uh, I know they lose out one of the games, but they you know, it felt like it was very close to the win. Very close to winning that one. So they split the first two with the main tanks. They split the next two with the different main tanks. So I think a lot of decisions still up in the air with how the Shock are going to split this roster. I mean, this map, despite the Shock struggling on control in this series, has been very much a favored one for them to lose on these Young Tower. Start here or now? God. So, I mean, uh, kind of a shame they really we don't see nearly as much Farah at the moment uh, on this map particularly. We saw it on Elios. Architect obviously is a fantastic Farah player. I think with uh, D.Va in the mix and then Rascals playing well. snipers as well. See the Farah go away as Sure 4 comes out on Sombra. Ooh, how about Pay that? on the Tracer. So the Gladiator is undefeated. The so Shock undefeated on Lee Jung and the Gladiator is undefeated on Tiebreaker maps. They're switching. So we're going to see the Shock, uh, the, the Gladiators probably go back. They're going to play the Reaper May. What are they hoping for with their initial composition? Uh, you know, maybe if they were running like Far Widow, that's what they ran uh, on Ilios with this exact roster in. So maybe they had like a Far Widowmaker play here. You could have gotten really aggressive with a dive. But as soon as you see the Orisa and the May and the Reaper, you don't want to be playing that Winston. Here comes the push. Rascal forced into an early ice block, but his wall was good. Defense Matrix. God, it's so important at the moment. Void is frozen up. He couldn't protect himself from that. Defense Matrix just a shot. Stop the endothermic blasters left click. Roy gets mocked though. Rascal, Blizzard very early on in the fight though. Chaz gets coalescence just as quick, but Decay is taken down. With all the uh, extra warmth May has, that extra padding doesn't really cut the mustard for him. Coalescence now. Shock have gotten a lot of these ultimates in the fight, but they haven't really been able to use them to find big frontline kills. And now the sound barrier comes out. The Gladiator is looking even more durable. Moth not even close to having his ultimate. Do we see a supercharger from Smurf here to try and win the fight? It's got to be an important one now. And yeah, he throws it down. Architect close to a Death Blossom as well. All the stops being pulled out real early here on Legion Tower. And there it is. <laughs> Architect, oh. make sure the fight goes his way. You know, the Shark, they'll get the point first. They have to use a ton of ultimates to do it. They'll have another Coalescence and another Blizzard. But just take a look at the Gladiators. You lose this fight, you're going to give up, what, 20% uh, 
when you get back for the next one, you're going to have five ultimates here. So not the worst thing if you're the LA Gladiators. This was something that hurt the London Spitfire, Matt, uh, in their game today against the Mayhem. They spent so many ultimates just getting the point. The Gladiators are going on a flank here. Sure for teleport onto the point, just directly on there. He has great for the looks of things. Let's see what he does about this. Sound barrier for the shock, but they've already lost Smurf, and that is a bad omen. The only shield they have is the wall. Clever by Rascal, though. He drops the wall just as the Blizzard comes out. Catches Void. Self-destruct for him. He's about not going to be able to get back into his mech, and there's not much to assist Troy Kobe to self-destruct. Architect tried to break the wall manually to get the blast out there, but it didn't work. Another wall is placed in front of Shaw 4, but the Shock do not have pole position right now. They are being shunted off the point. And Shaw 4 is getting more off percent by the second. Naturally, over though, on the point, the still contest. You got Architect and Smurf there as well. Moth going to come back, but this is a lot of percentage that the Shock are getting extra. Remind you, this is five ultimates invested here for the Gladiators with about like 20 to 30 percent in favor of the Shock. And the Shock extend that all the way to 60%. So but the first part, Matt, is probably even the most important, forcing five ultimates out. If the Gladiators yeah. retake the point, with only using two or three ults. They're in a great position to snowball the whole round, but now teams go back on more even footing. Sound barrier is gonna be big for Big Goose. The Violet Mayhem's coalescence. Architect, where's he trying to go? Other side of the point here, the wall's not gonna protect the Gladiators from Kim. Smurf smart. couldn't do anything. No sound barrier used here, and now the Gladiators are up to two support ultimates, Matt. And he got to pack out, and he had no shield here. They're going to use Coalescence, maybe just trying to force some ultimates out. So they get the Coalescence out, maybe they can try and force the sound barrier. It just it not will happen. not happen. As that's probably the action they tried to use there to get that sound barrier out. So if you would have gotten sound barrier, you could have reset, like, ultimate economy in terms of supports across the board, but... The Shock are trying to haggle like it's a Persian rug shop, Matt. It's trying to force the Gladiators to part with more of their war when you chest. Lose that, when you lose that tank first, I mean, it is tough. Like, Smurf's position needs to be perfect on these entries. Yeah, it's uncomfortable choke to push through. Look at Architect. Oh. He doesn't want to be there at all. Death Boston comes in. Architect was able to rape walk just in time, but the back line was not so lucky. And Big Goose follows up with a nice big boob. Home crowd pleased. Gladiators now on the front foot, and guess what? They still have three ultimates. They are getting so much value. A Death Blossom and a boot with a Supercharger, that was enough. Outside of the first fight, it has been all Gladiators. See ya! Uh, big Goose with the boots there. Architect just jumps off the side. Is how they go to attack. There's actually the maze sitting in the corner here, so Decay is able to get one. And that might be all they need, really. Soundbarrier was still used here by the Gladiators, but this is the only fight that they had to win now. They can use all their ultimates as they please. DK puts up a ball, he keeps the shock in there. I'm not locked in here with you. You're locked in here with me. Boy now on the point, getting a little bit low. They're gonna have to use raw shield as long as they possibly can here. Shore 4 is returning to the fight from spawn right now, so Architect has free reign for the time being. And well, as a result, Void is felled. Still moving forward as the Gladiators try and backtrack. At least they still had Raw late in the fight. They were able to shield themselves, but Architect now will farm them up for a little bit of old percent. That was supposed to be a Gladiators win right there, Matt, but something went wrong in the corridor. Yeah, just uh, maybe get a little bit too cheeky. They're just hiding in the corner. They're able to get one with a Blizzard, but a Blizzard comes down from Rascal in return. They try and follow up their own. It just did not work out. As, uh, they do split some players off here, so trying to get through the doorways. So they keep going over towards this corridor, and then they have Shurfor go on these flanks. He's trying to get a teleport around. And I wonder if the, the Shock, they have an idea that he keeps coming. He's coming from the left side of Moth here. Yeah, there he is. see him. Defense Matrix deployed. Shurfor has to back away a little bit low, but he'll be back in the fight before long. Don't worry, Gladiators fans. Architect in, trying to go for the death loss, but Defense Matrix is already in play by Void. He still gets away with Murder literally gets in there and gets the cane. And now the sound barrier just smooth things out much more. Architect can finish the job, raw down. And it's 99 to 99. This has to be a big death loss from Shaw 4. Gets one, but Architect silences him there. Heals himself up with that life steal. Self destruct thrown on, but Violet just fades in. Void's able to remake here at the very least, and Shaz is gone down. No more Moira for the Gladiators, and Architect has yet another death blossom. He's going to use it now just to be sure, just in case. He might be frozen solid. But he claimed the point. That'll be the shock taking point one. Decay is coming back. He actually threw a blizzard through the window there to try and maybe get a touch. You had war coming out. Unlike Bob, it won't contest the point yeah. for you. 
as uh, we mentioned earlier in the day, you know, the Gladiators have not been able to beat the other teams in the top seven consistently. They take the shock here. Does that just mean the that they are five. where they belong? They're undefeated. <laughs> you, what does that even mean, I guess? You look at like the, the other teams in the top, you know, they're able to all like take games off each other pretty evenly. You have a low map win percentage for the Gladiators against those top teams. I think it just speaks to more around playoff time. Like, I think if you're the Gladiators, you've seen this team dominate stages. You've seen this team, you know, play well in the regular season. It's just how do you turn that into a playoff game? And you kind of treat this as a playoff game to the top teams in the league. Because if you want to go any further, you're going to be playing a lot of playoff games. Hopefully not play in games. That's what the Gladiators are trying to avoid. A 45% uh, map record against, a, uh, against the top seven is not going to be great playoff time. You need more. Arch oh, Architect! Trying to rape walk away. It expired and yeah, he went down. Should, uh, should be pretty straightforward now, to be honest with you. So much damage missing from the Shocks lineup. Architect coming back from spawn here. Rascal was frozen briefly. He was in Ice Block, should I say. So that is true, but not in the way I meant it. Okay, looking to try and get to the back line. He's been blocked for the most part. Denied. This fight is stretched out a fair bit, but it's fine because no one held the point at the beginning of it. The shot can have an elongated fight. It won't hurt them in the long run, but they do concede the point first. And we'll see the Gladiators decide if they're going to push up to the choke, play that game, or play a little bit further back by the point. I mean, you like shouldn't, for now, should you? It looks like for now they're going to go play by the stairs. I, at the beginning of the choke, it's very dangerous when you have two Maze in play get split off with a wall. It, it all takes like a good wall from Rascal to like wall your May off or something like this. And then it forces you to go a completely different direction. You have to back on up. So they'll concede some space to the shock here at the beginning. Sure for again, is just chip damage from long range right now, but they try and chase after him and, oh dear. How is he gonna get away from this one? Peeping through the keyhole, couldn't get past the wall, but he has the Wraith walk away. Keeping his distance as the self-destruct goes in over the top here from Void. Blizzard by the cave being deployed and sure for now is going to make the best use of it that he can. Smurf, Trick Open, desuited here in the ice. Yeah, again, the shock are going to be routed. You see uh, just Reaper's updated kit with the better teleport now. It's not just like a free kill. You're able to actually use it uh, while falling, while jumping, and they're able to use it to just get behind enemy lines. Reaper's so difficult to deal with, especially when like chaos is ensuing because he has so many mechanics now with the Wraith form and the teleport to get out of dodge or even enter the fight. As you see right there, you know, Sherpore teleports to the back line, putting down some damage. They turn to deal with him, he just Wraith forms away. All right, the wall throwing up there so the shot can just try and get onto the point early. Get good positioning. Sherpore descends, brooding as he makes his way down. Another Wraith Walk required from both Reapers. Sure for though. May still find his way to the back lines a little bit more. That's a blizzard from Rascal this time, and immediately it catches Roar out. He was low, admittedly. Decay, frozen up. He's able to break free of it though, but it doesn't matter. The damage is done. The Shock win a fight, and Matt, they win it with just two ultimates. They're going to need to do that more to stay in this. They will end up flipping the point here. At 99 though, I mean, the Gladiators yeah. just have to have some patience as long as they don't not even to use ultimates. I mean, they, they have a blizzard. They have the death blossom that they've been saving for a while. Coalescence. You can you can use some of these here and win a fight. Good oh, Maywall there from Rathbone. Right. Okay, but the shock are being very safe here. They know like if they get first pick, they're probably gonna lose the map uh, the round, should I say? So they do follow up. What probably would have been pretty elementary. Here's a coalescence though from Chaz. He lets that one go straight away. The wall's gonna block a lot of that. An architect. Having a one on one moment there with Raw. He's kept alive. Death Blossom thrown in the coalescence, though. Really important from Violet. A lot of healing for the shock, and we're sure for now down. This is where Architect gets the party. He would have gotten more if he wasn't knocked back over. But that sound barrier from Big Goose uh, does nothing to keep them alive. And Matt, we just talked about not using ultimate scriptlessly. And <laughs> I know. And I was, as soon as like I saw him use the beat, like three people got hit by it. I was like, oh, oh. man, here we go. Uh, now you just have self-destruct. It's not going to win you any fights, really, unless you get a really good May wall oh, to man. go with this it. This is not good for the Gladiators. They need a pick. Find something. Void goes in, self-destruct, like you said. Didn't find anything. With Raw down already, the fight is all but over. A chance here for the Shock, just to get themselves some more ultimates ticking along. Violet with another love, another coalescence. would love to have one. And Moth's sound barrier is that, because you know they just burned their beat. 
you can burn your beat here to potentially save everybody from that self destruct Oh no, you couldn't lose anybody in that scenario. Coalescently, Shazza coalesces. Both of them go for it. Violet uses his as well. Keep an eye on the health bars at the top right now. It's going to get a little bit messy. Rascal goes to the ice block there. Walls up. He's trying to get away. Rascal's going to get frozen now. Choke open charges in to try and keep his fight alive, and it works out. They knew that Rascal had the blizzard. They need to be able to use that later in the fight. Another sound barrier from Big Goose, but that expires before the shot can start fighting. And 97% is on the clock. The Gladiators now, their last chance to take this away, or the series will have fallen by the wayside. Rascal's Blizzard, that's where your eyes should be right now. That is the most important ultimate and the only ultimate on the field. He throws it up, tries to block Shaw 4 in with the wall. It looks like he might be able to get Decay amongst this one. Decay forced in the ice block. Choke open throws a self destruct over the backhand side, but it's Raw taken down. And there's a sound barrier for the San Francisco Shock. Here it is! The moment they've been waiting for. Architect gets an uncontested dead blossom, and Shaw 4 can't do anything to keep this one alive. San Francisco, bring it home! The shark come up clutch in the end. It's just the ultimate usage there in that fifth map. They're able to just take both points. And the Gladiators with a really oh, tough loss. That hurts for them. Again, the trend of struggling against teams ranked higher than them continues. A tough one for sure, but this is still the San Francisco shock. A team has shown us unparalleled depth in the last few weeks. They move to 18 and 5 and secure themselves that top six spot. Yes, that will, that will, uh, like you mentioned, they will secure them a spot in the top six. I mean, so that's huge. They don't have to play them. the play ins no, at all. You will not see them in the play ins, which is a huge advantage for the Shark come overall season playoffs. They can sit, watch, wait, work on their strategy, and focus on the end of season playoffs. The real big prize is waiting on the other side of those. San Francisco smiles all around here. Now let's head down to the floor with Danny and Rascal. Mitch and Matt, thank you very much. Everybody give it up for Rascal and San Francisco Shaw. Congratulations. Great job. What a match. What a way to end the day. Now, throughout the whole season, we've been seeing you on support a lot with your crazy Baptiste skills. But now we're starting from stage four. You're back to your roots and playing more damage and being a damage player again. How does that feel for you? 어 일단 이번 시즌은 좀 특별하게 라스콜 선수가 원래는 딜러지만 좀 힐러를 많이 했죠. 특히나 좀 바티스트를 좀 되게 잘하는 모습을 많이 보여줬는데 이번 스테이지 4로 들어오면서 다시 딜러로 돌아가게 되셨습니다. 좀 어떠신가요? 어 사실 그동안 브리기테 바티스트 하면서 뭐 아군 힐하는 거 그런 거 많이 해가지고 사실 적 죽이는 법을 까먹었는데 좀 다시 배워가고 있는 것 같고요. 그래서 그냥 좀더 들어갈 것 같아요. So throughout the whole season, I've been play playing a lot, lot of Brig and also Batiste. Um, I've been healing a lot of our allies. So I sort of forgot how to shoot, how to kill our enemies. I'm sort of in a, you know, in a, in a, in a process of learning that again, becoming a damage player. But all in all, um, it's really good to be back. Now, uh, with today's win, actually, San Francisco Shock, you guys have officially clinched a spot in the top six for season playoffs. You guys won't be in play-ins. You guys are going straight to playoffs. Do you have any message for your potential enemies during the season playoffs? Oh, 쉽게 말씀드리면 이제 플레이 안 하셔도 돼요. 확실하게 플레이오프로 들어왔기 때문에 적팀하게 한 말씀 부탁드릴게요. 어 지금 메이가 주류로 쓰이고 있잖아요. 이 메이 주류인 메타에서 저를 이길 팀은 제가 들어가 있는 팀을 이길 팀은 없다고 생각해요. 저희 팀이 최고인 것 같습니다. Because Mei is used a lot uh, throughout this whole meta, and, and Mei has been used a lot in our compositions. Um, any teams that utilize Mei, if you're coming to come in, uh, if you're facing off against San Francisco, you guys won't be able to beat us because I'm here. Like that answer. I really like that answer. High five, Rascal. Thank you so much, Casters. Back to you guys. Thank you very much, Danny. And well, fair enough. It's sometimes it's hard to quantify the impact that, that May really has in some of these fights because you have to look for the walls and for the blizzards while the Reaper gets all the kills. But it's undeniable that Rascal is still looking pretty fresh coming off after playing oh, yeah. flex support for so long. Yeah, the May is really about you know splitting players off the blizzards, but it, it's really a difficult game now because both teams have a May a lot of the times. So you're trying to like position your walls, bait other walls out from the other players, but we have the HP Omen player of the match.
And this one will go to Architect. They thought he had a very good game on the Reaper. I think his Hanzo also showed up big today. And look, he seems to be a mainstay in this roster, a lot of the maps. And yeah. I think you're going to need him to show up big. Today he did. And it wasn't just the Reaper. It wasn't just going in and getting the dirty work done. No, he looked good over a multitude of different heroes. I like the Hanzo. It's great to see him back in the mix. Uh, yes. Architect was a very hyped up player for good reason. He comes in here alongside Troy Hoven, longtime teammates, and continues to sh have an impact and also demonstrates that the incubation, uh, you know, chamber that is the San Francisco shot is operating on all cylinders there. Very impressive from him. Yeah, you can see his Reaper stats for this match. So uh, the damage at 47k, 41 That's final blows, 27 Death Blossom kills. How, uh, <laughs> we really don't see that many Death Blossom kills. A pretty uh, wild game there for Architect. Yeah, look at the multi kills. Six of those, they're the ones you're looking for here. And that's how the, the standings, I guess, are sort of going to shape up now, you see, after this match. Importantly, so the shot clinched top six, but the Gladiators and Spitfire also mathematically oh, yeah. clinched top 12. Those spots, not only in the top six, but also in the, in the play-in matches berth, are drying up quickly. Yeah, I was Teams like say. the Fusion Charge, Dragons, Rain, Hunters, Fuel Valley, and Outlaws need to start making their push. You're, you're going to start to see spots you know, every day, little by little. You know, rack up, you know, who's securing top 12? Who's locking down top six? Will one of these teams, you know, Gladiators or Spitfire in the next few weeks, clinch that top six spot? We'll have to find out. Well, that's all we've got for you games-wise so far. But coming up next is Watchpoint. We're going to wrap up the games. We've seen some bizarre matches. London, of course, struggling against the last place Mayhem. How did that happen? We'll give you an update on the playoffs, and we'll talk about who's clinched and who still has a shot to make it into the play-ins. We'll catch you guys in just a moment for Watchpoint. The Overwatch League is brought to you by Toyota, official North American partner of the Overwatch League. Toyota, let's go places.